chapter 16. Does somebody somebody have that one for me? Revelation 16, 13 to 16? Yep. Okay. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. That's bad breath. Can you imagine? You open your mouth and frogs jump out. But they are the this spirits. is This is... <laughs> this guy needs a lot of moral hygiene. It's just not very clean in there, right? Okay. Keep going. For they are the spirit of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them together to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Notice the verb. Which go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the great day of God the Almighty. Keep going. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. That's a little parenthesis in the statement. Wake up, guys, because something's coming. And then the last verse. And he gathered them. Notice the verb again. Gathered them together. Into a valley called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. To a place which in Hebrew is called Armageddon, Armageddon, Armageddon. Your English translations will go different directions with that. remembered here for all of the historic reasons that we talked about now who's writing the book of Revelation at least according to your traditional understanding more than tradition some would say some would say it's written very late all kinds of things well, let's call it the one, most loved of Jesus. the one most loved of Jesus let's call it John I think that's I I think we could we'll call it safe uh, John is a very good author what else does he write John. The Gospel of John. John what else John. does he write? <laughs> First, second, third John and Revelation. Of the four Gospels, which is the last? John. Chronologically and in order. John gets the last word. Of the epistles, which one is essentially last? Which ones? First, second, third John. I mean, there's Jude there as well, but first, second, and third John, essentially last. John gets the last word. In the Gospel of John, by the way, after all of the data about Jesus' life, John just comes back and says, he says, Messiah, love, peace, this kind of thing, right? Just sort of sums it up. It's more detailed than that, but just sort of calmly sums it up. Uh, in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, after Paul does all the great, you know, slugging and stuff to try to get everybody right in terms of righteousness and faith, John comes back and says, love one another. Just sort of sums it up. Uh, the last word is the good word. And the last of the last he gets as well, Revelation. When I was in seminary, I saw a book on the shelf in seminary called um, something like quotations of the Old Testament in Revelation. The book was this thick, I didn't buy it because I knew it skipped most of them. Every sentence here, every sentence, it's like he pulls his hand right through the text, grabs it and pulls it back out again from Genesis 1 all the way through. Just incredibly rich. And so he's, he's inviting us every time we see something to see what illusions it has deeper in Scripture that he's now coming and, 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 and using the past in order to explain present and future. That's point number one. Point number two, where did John grow up? Around the Sea of Galilee. Jewish fishermen, his native language is going to, his mother's knee language is going to be Hebrew. Including his reading the Old Testament language is going to be Hebrew. Okay, he'll do some Aramaic around the lake, he'll know some Greek as well. If he sells a fish to a centurion, he's going to know a bit of Latin. But his mother's tongue language is Hebrew, that's his fluentist one. And his literary one, you might say, his, 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 most, his most expressive one. The one that he knows the best and the terminology and that he knows the best. Although he's writing here in Greek, apparently. And so he says, now look. There's going to be this great battle. Read about it. Read about it in Joel. Read about it in Zechariah. This great final battle, totally monopolized. Time God totally monopolizes uh, the world and so on. The day of the Lord. The army is going to be gathered together twice, gathered to a place. And now even though he's writing in Greek, he says a place which in Hebrew is called. And then he gives a place name. Now why does he bother to say which in Hebrew is called? How come he says that? Hmm? Hmm? No city here at the time? 
what is he's telling us that there must be a Hebrew name behind Armageddon. Armageddon is a Greek form. It has the O-N, that's a Greek ending, uh, the, out, the A prefix and so on. It looks Greek. It's a Greek name. It's, it's, as, it's as Greek as, you know, Papa Andreas sounds Greek. I mean, it's a Greek sounding name. It's a Greeky name. All right. But he's telling you that there's a Hebrew form of that name underlying it that he's not giving you. And it's the Hebrew form that counts. A name which in Hebrew, he's saying, get back to your Hebrew. Now the question is, what is that Hebrew term? That's the question. All right. How is it usually broken apart? Armageddon, Har, Megiddo, correct? That's typically the way it's broken apart. All right, Har is the front part. Let's do that one first. What does Har mean? Hill, mountain, something like that, right? All right, look around a bit. Mountain of Megiddo, yeah? What does that refer to? That's a problem. Now we have a conceptual geographical problem. All right, what is that thing? That's a hill. That's a har. That's a har. Those are hars. What's this? This is a tell, which is also a Hebrew word, and it's a different geographical form, and, and John would have known it. There's a different Hebrew word for this. This is a tell, and he's smart enough to know that. There's tells all through this land. Joshua even talks about some of them. And John, native to this land, knows the difference between a tell and a har. And if he would have meant this particular city, we would have a place which in Hebrew is called tel Megiddon. And that's not the Greek form that we have. Now it could be that he means the hilly area around Megiddo. And he's using it more generically, like Mount Ephraim being all the hills of Ephraim, Mount Manasseh being all the hills of Manasseh. Maybe so. 